every single day you give yourself 30 minutes of uninterrupted focus of moving the needle forward. Welcome back to this week's episode of It Takes Grit. Oh, you are going to love this episode. You're going to get so many nuggets. We've got Nathan Chan on the podcast today. He is the CEO of Founder, helping entrepreneurs get exactly where they want to be. And with so many online courses, you know, with so many options out there, I wanted to bring you guys something that I trusted um, and where you can get some really valuable information from. So we are going to dive in. And Nathan, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Rebecca. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Yeah, so, so excited to have you here. Um, and we have lots of people that listen to the show that are just starting out in their side hustle, starting out in building a new business. And I feel sometimes there's so much stuff online um, that it's it's hard to know where to start. So we're really going to break that down for people today uh, to give them an action plan so that they actually take action afterwards. Um, but I want to know about you, Nathan, because you've become very, very successful. I mean, like I've been reading all the things you're accolades online you know taking uh, you know instagram accounts from like zero to like 500k in just like less than 12 months i mean just amazing what you've done tell us about nathan because people can't relate when they see all these big numbers where did you come from how did you grow up and how did you get to where you are today yeah so um thanks for the kind words rebecca uh yeah no i agree it's easy to look at the things you read online or the highlight or show reel that you see of people. Um, and for me, uh, I, I honestly, Founder is the first uh, thing that I've ever done where I've ever achieved anything of, of you know, significance, right? I, I uh, never got good school grades. I never did anything in academia. Like I never got great, great, uh, you know, results. Um, I struggled to get through my university degree. I failed so many subjects. Um, and then even professionally, you know, professionally, I uh, started in a job in IT support, which I absolutely hated. Um, I remember even my parents didn't think I would do much. Uh, my my parents used to joke and laugh that maybe they would uh, get me like a mowing franchise if things didn't work out for me. So I never really accomplished much. Um, but what happened was something changed where I did a Europe trip. I went to Europe, I traveled around the world and, uh, that kind of made me realize that I didn't want to do the work that I was doing anymore. And I started to hear these stories when I came back, um, after my trip, I started to hear these stories of people starting online businesses, like friends of friends. And I was like, how the hell are these people doing it? And this is what, 10 years ago now. Um, so entrepreneurship was still cool back then, but nowhere near as cool as it is now. And I, what I realized when I, when I started to hear these stories was like, how the hell are these people doing it? These people have no experience whatsoever. They have no background in, in building businesses. They don't have no background in, in anything of what, what, what they were doing. And I thought this was really, really interesting. And so what I did was I started this magazine on the side as a passion project and it wasn't even called founder at the time. And I started to interview these people around how the hell they were building these businesses. And i what I realized after doing it for a while was just like, wow, these stories are so awesome that, I have to share this with the world that that how the how people are building these businesses is so incredibly powerful and that anyone can do it it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter your experience your background um how much money you have and that's kind of how founder was born and uh the first in the first four months i got an interview with richard branson uh and the rest was kind of history and I started to build out this magazine and share the stories. And then as time has gone on, we've kind of uh, become much more than a magazine. We produce a lot of content around business and entrepreneurship. And we're actually, our biggest focus is building a, you know, really 
like one of the largest online business schools in the world where we ask all the people that we interview for our show to actually teach on our platform. And we're building, yeah, the most comprehensive school on everything you need to know to start or grow a business. But that's that's kind of me in a nutshell. That's uh, how Founders started and where I came from. That's incredible. I love it because Richard Branson then came in within like four months. That's a pretty good person to to, to get early on. How, how did you get Richard Branson? Yeah, so um, one thing that I've learned in my journey, which I think is so critical, whatever it is you're doing in business, is this idea that if somebody else has done it, you need to you need to find them and you need to learn from them. And, you know, your community, the people around you are so critical when you're starting a business uh, or growing a business or whatever, wherever you're at in business. And when I started this digital magazine, there was actually a peer group of other people running digital magazines. And so you could, you could use the magazine on your app or your iPad, on, on your phone or your iPad. And I met other magazine owners and I, 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 I found somebody that was getting all these incredible interviews, like interviews with like Bono and all sorts of, Jamie Oliver and all sorts of famous people. And I said, how the hell are you doing it? And uh, she took me through this process where basically if you – really if you have a magazine it has a lot of weight and you can you can go out to publishers so i found the publisher of uh one of richard brands's books penguin random house and then i tracked uh back his publisher and then i ended up getting in touch with his head of pr and then from his head of pr i was calling her and i i just pitched and i never forget i was at my i, I was living with my housemate at the time and, uh, you know, I told them to be quiet. It was at night. So you're, you're based in the UK, so not, not in the morning, but at night, so Melbourne time. So it would have been her early morning. And I was like, I called her up and I said, hey, do you have a couple of minutes? I kept trying to call her, like I called at least five times, sent a few emails, no response. And I said, oh, do you have, um, you know, a couple of minutes? I've been trying to get in touch with you. And she's like, I've got 30 seconds. I'm just about to hop onto the tube. And I gave her my pitch, I was stumbling, I was all over the place. And she said to me, look, I tell you what, we get at least 10 to 20 of these pitches a day. Shoot me an email. It, I, I, it might take me a while to get back to you, but I promise I'll get back to you. And then I, I just wrote a really good email saying, talking to the fact that Richard Branson's first uh, business magazine, business venture was a student magazine. And, uh, I got a, an email interview and the rest is kind of history, but that's, uh, yeah, that's how all that came about. That's incredible. So when you decided to start the magazine, what, what, what was it that made you go, this is what I meant to do. I'm coming back from my Europe trip. And how long did it take you to take action on the idea that you had? Cause I feel like that's a big uh, kind of a gap that people have is they have this idea and then they talk themselves out of it. How did you not talk yourself out of opening a magazine? Because that's a big deal to, to do something that you've never done before. Yeah, so uh, it took me, a, it took me honestly about six months. Um, so the first thing I did was I purchased the software which held me accountable. I didn't have much money at the time, but it cost me 2000 US dollars. So I invested in myself and purchased this off the shelf software that allowed me to publish the magazine. Now that took that process took six months to bring it together. I almost gave up many times, uh, but what what kept me going was this idea that I invested in myself that I didn't want to waste that money. Um, that was the first thing, and the second thing was uh, I had um, I had a, a situation with my girlfriend now fiance where I asked her, I said, hey, we were at the zoo, it was summer 2012. And I said to her, hey, do you think like the amount of work that I put in to launch this magazine, uh, it'll actually be something? And she said, no. She said, you know, I don't think you work hard enough on it. And that was kind of like flicks, flick of switch for me. And then I launched it, you know, six months later. And uh, what really kept me going was those first two subscribers on the first day. Um, so uh, those first two subscribers, and then as time went on, 
um, you know, I, I just didn't want to let them down. And then every single every single month, I was like, I've got a new magazine edition, new magazine edition, and I and still to this day, we publish a new magazine edition. I think we're up to, I think the hundred and tenth, one hundred and twelfth edition. Um, so, yeah, uh, that that's kind of like how I knew that that I, I was meant to do this because it was just so much fun. And as I said, I realized that the content, the, the stuff we were putting out there was really, really powerful and I had to share it with the world. That's awesome. And that's great of your fiance. She told you what you needed to hear, not what you wanted to hear. <laughs> yep, that's right. I think that's true with a lot of like, if you've got a real friend or a real mentor, they'll always tell you exactly what you need to hear. So at the beginning, was the magazine, like how much did you sell it for? You, you talk about those two subscribers. Was that your first like bring money in? How much was the magazine being sold for? Yeah, so uh, the first, let me think, the first day we made $5.50 and it was uh, a one magazine uh, subscription. It would have been two ninety nine a month and then the other would have been a one-off purchase. So it would have been $3.99 for a one-off purchase. And, and how many years have you now had that magazine? Oh, we're, co we're coming on 10 years it's coming now. On 10 it's years crazy. Right now. It's crazy. And like, founder is so much more than that now. Like the magazine's only a very, very small part of our business. The big part is the online education platform now. Yeah. That's incredible. Because, you know, I think a lot of times when people are starting businesses, you, ex you know, not that you necessarily expect like loads of money to come in, but you, you expect more than $3. You're like, I've put six months of time in it six you know six dollars has come in three dollars has come in how do you how do you keep going because there's so many people out there they're starting their side hustle they might be selling things on etsy they might be doing network marketing and then that first like month they might make a hundred dollars and you're like how am i ever going to survive on a hundred dollars a lot of people can start things but a lot of people really struggle to be a finisher right they start a lot of things but they don't finish what advice would you give people to you know, keep going, even if you're making kind of, you know, the $3 in that first, like, you know, sale, how do you, how do you keep the vision alive? How do you keep excited that it's going to turn into something? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, because <laughs> Rebecca, like, I often think that to myself, um, like how, how, how did I keep going in those early days? And honestly, it was because it was because the work that we, that I was doing was just so important to me and I just enjoyed it so much. Um, and if I, even if I wasn't paid any money, I would have done it for free. And I think that's so key when you are doing any kind of career change, whether you're working for yourself or you're working for somebody else, the business that you're starting, you have to be so passionate about that problem you're solving. And yeah, for me, um, I really want to do work that I enjoyed and the work that we're doing with Founder um, still to this day. Yeah, look, the highs are high and the lows are low. Don't, I'm not going to say that, that entrepreneurship is easy. It takes grit, right? Uh, but for me, I think, and I can only talk to my own personal experiences, it was just so much fun. It was so much fun. And I realized that this is what I was meant to do. And, and um, the kind of content and, and the stories and the experiences and the lessons learned, I realized that like this stuff is so extremely powerful. It's so awesome that we have to share it with the world. And I was doing the world a disservice. I think that's exactly how, to, how you have to look at things because if you're not having fun with you know your side hustle or building your new business, it's it's going to be exhausting. You have to have a burning desire and a passion for it. You know, I don't know how many workout videos I've done where you know I didn't get paid for it, or how many things I've done where it was just like trying to you know trying to put something on your resume. I mean, to get my green card to live in America, it was just you know put anything that you I'll do anything for free to 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 make my resume to make my CV look more than it was. Um, I think a lot of times people see you know you know founders site and there's all of these different options and they're in a career they've been doing it for ten years they've been doing it for fifteen years they want to pivot they want to do something else but is that fear kind of setting in? Like, how did you know that when you came back from that trip, like it was time to pivot? 
Because I think some people go, well, I got kids now. I'll wait till the kids are 10. No, well, then now they're 10. I'm going to wait till they're 15. Or, you know, I'm going to wait until I move to this place. How did you how did you decide to make that pivot? And what have you seen with other people that you've, you know, you've seen loads of entrepreneurs over the last 10 years? A lot of people have, you know, been in corporate and then they pivot. How, how do people make that shift? Is it that they should balance both things at the same time until their income comes up? Should they just make the switch? Like, how would you navigate that? Yeah, so Rebecca, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know uh, if this was the right move. Um, I think for me, something had something had shifted inside of me where I, I was just like, look, I, I need to make a change. And um, I was prepared and okay if it didn't work out. I remember when I started things, when I started the business, I said to myself, I'll give myself 12 months, 12 months and of giving it was a really good go and let's just see where we're at after 12 months. And by that 12 month stage, I was going full time on, on founder. Um, I had six months, or at least three to six months of savings. I think that's really key as well. But I think uh, what was also awesome was I was doing it on the side. So anyone that's looking to make a career change, looking to start a business any way, shape or form or, or do a career change. I think doing it on the side, even freelancing um, that career change uh, or going back to school to learn if it's a career change. I think uh, so many times people put this extreme amount of pressure on themselves. You look at others, you compare yourself to others, you look at what others are doing and you're like, oh, wow, I want that. I have to have it now. And you, know, you put all this pressure on yourself. I've got to leave my job. I've got to do this thing full time. Do it on the side. Um, and I think one key thing that really helped me was 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. How can I spend 30 minutes a day for the next 12 months working on my business, doing something actionable though, not like researching, actually, you know, writing that blog post, actually recording that podcast episode, actually, you know, speaking to a supplier if you're ordering stock for your physical product, actually moving the needle forward. If you can do that for 30 minutes every single day on the side, you know, after work or before work, I promise you, you will make uh, more of a difference in your day to day than you ever have. And I think if you can make that habit, just no dissimilar to like every morning and night you brush your teeth, every single day you give yourself 30 minutes of uninterrupted focus of moving the needle forward. And that really helped me. Yeah, it's the income producing activities. Because it's so yeah. often that we kind of go, oh, this is on my to do list. And it's like, has anything today been like, income producing actually making shifts towards my business so i'm glad that you said that um and then really just like you don't know like you 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 might not know about the pivot like i was just on a call with a client this morning and you know when's the right time you're not going to know until afterwards and the right time is always just like right now it's like just just see what happens just give it a go what are some of your favorite stories from the last you know 10 years of, of having having founders of, of testimonials of of people who have you know made massive shifts is there anything that really sticks out to you as like a really you know a couple of special moments from maybe your personal growth and, and business accomplishments or you know some people from your clients yeah so we have uh tens of thousands of students that have gone through our online programs at founder i think we're we're closing in on hundreds of thousands soon. Um, and uh, there's a couple that, that, that I think about often um, that really are just a testament to what you can do with the right information um, and really applying yourself. So uh, one, of our, one of our best-selling programs called Start and Scale um, taught by one of our instructors, Greta Van Riel. She's won like Shopify build a business. She's got like so many different e-commerce stores. She's just an absolute uh, superstar when it comes to starting e-commerce businesses. And she's got a really solid process on how to start them. 
Um, in the early days, we were just like, oh, what if we created, uh, when we launched that program, what if we created like no dissimilar, like a founder start a business competition? So um, we ran this competition and we flew down um, like our three best students uh, to Melbourne and whoever could grow their, their e-commerce business the fastest. Um, now there were two, the, the, the people that grew their business the fastest were these two guys, Brandon and Justin, still good friends with them today. Justin was only 17 at the time and uh, they grew this business from like zero to at least $60,000 a month or $150,000 in three months. Um, and uh, they, they, they ended up selling that business and we flew them down. Um, and it was just incredible to see what Justin and Brandon did there. And then there was Gamal um, who actually sold that business now as well. So there was Gamal Codner. He started a company called Fresh Heritage and it was a uh, beard oil uh, for people of color. And he ended up selling that company. But when he went through uh, the Start and Scale program, he took his business from a few thousand dollars a month to $60,000 a month. Um, and then there was another person, her name was Shannon Willoughby, and she was from New Zealand. And she played in the New Zealand uh, female rugby team. And she had uh, an aromatherapy business. And she started that from scratch. And she got that to $20,000 a month. And I guess um, the reason I tell you these stories and I think about them often was it was just so incredible um, to be able to facilitate somebody's growth through our online program, just one of, one of many. And we've got so many, like thousands, thousands, thousands of stories like this. We even have a dedicated podcast to our successful students or people in our community. Um, but I guess uh, where I'm going with this is these people had no experience whatsoever uh, like starting an online business uh, and they just worked really hard and they followed a process and they learned from somebody that's done it before. And I think that's so critical when it comes to starting any kind of business. And that's what we're trying to do with, with Founder and, and, and Founder Plus, our new all access membership pass, where it doesn't matter what kind of business you want to start. We've got practitioners, what we call them practitioners, people that have started um, businesses in every, like every, every type of business model you could think of. And they're, and they're teaching on our platform and uh, we're only just getting started there. But um, those are a few stories uh, that, that really ring true to me that are incredible. I love that. And my mentor always told me success leaves clues. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, like follow somebody successful. There's, there's a lot of online courses. I mean, right. I mean, I feel like in the last like two years, like everyone's coming out with online course. You can use Kajabi to set something up really simple. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of choice. How do you know how to pick the right I guess, teacher or a person who's actually, because I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of people are putting courses online that actually haven't done the work themselves. You know, mm -hmm. business coaches who've never had a business, um, you know, so it's, it's really important to find the right people who are educating. How do you make sure that you're finding, obviously you guys have got so many on yours, but say if one of our audience was to go over to your site, how would they, you know, make sure that they're finding the right course or the right teacher for them and then do you have any tips for going through an online course? Like what days that you should do it on, putting it with your schedule? Because I feel like a lot of people buy them and then they don't complete it. I mean, I have an online course and I can see the percentage of people who actually make it all the way through. You know, what, what, what tips do we have for finding the right course for you and then making sure that you actually complete it? Yeah, so in regards to finding the right one, I think there's a few things. Um, I'm a big fan of looking at what, you know, the teacher's done uh, and are they actually doing it right now? Um, if, if what they've done and they're teaching it from a business context, they're actually doing it right now, that's a really good thing. If they are not and they're in the business of selling what they've done, I think that's, um, that's something you need to look out for because you want to learn from somebody that's done it, but you also want to learn from somebody that's doing it right now. Like for example, Greta, she's just doing it. 
like she's, she's starting so many different e-commerce businesses. She clearly has a repeatable form and framework or like one of our newest programs, D, um, with D Ding on how to start your digital agency. Like he has like a 150 person digital agency, right? And, and you know, so, so you want to find people that are doing it. And so I've done it and are doing it right now. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is you want to look up reviews, right? There's a lot of reviews online. Like what, what does Trustpilot say? Uh, what, what, are, what are independent reviews say? Um, and then the third thing is listen to an interview. Listen to content from that particular person. Do you like their ideas? Do Does their view of the world resonate with you? Um, I think when you when it comes to kind of choosing someone you want to learn from or invest in in an online program, um, you, you you not only want to see how they're doing it and how they've done it, but you actually it's, it's no dissimilar to school, right? Everyone had a favorite teacher, and that favorite teacher was someone that you could really learn from. Um, so so really spend the time to understand their process and how they think about things. Um, now, when it comes to kind of completing them, I think like anything, 30 minutes, small chunks, small chunks. And that's what's special around how we all, that's, I think it's special to how we think about online education is every single one of our lessons are no longer than 10 minutes. So we're a big fan of micro, this concept of micro learning. So if you do one lesson a day, you know, you, you will slowly chip through it. And then we always make sure that you have an actionable item, like something actionable. So, you know, for example, if you followed, it's a great one, just because it's an easy example, like Greta's course, if you follow Greta's course, um, you know, your first module is about coming up with your idea. If you finish that module, you will have your idea. You'll have a, you, you will, and you will have validated it as well. So every single lesson, under 10 minutes, you go through the process, you know, you, you have worksheets that you fill out. So every single lesson, every step of the way, you're doing actionable things. I think a lot of the time people are lazy when it comes to, to teaching online courses. People just shoot videos for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, don't even cut it. Like our we're, our courses are like, like we spend like 50, 100 grand each course like with the set, how we put it together. We have like a learning development specialist, all these different things. Um, so that's kind of how I, how I think about how people should think about, I guess, um, going through them, choosing. And then also, I, I agree that a lot of people purchase online courses and they don't complete them. And I think, honestly, it comes back to the investment that you're making in yourself and the accountability, like what's the community like? Is there, is there accountability there? Um, that's something as well you should, like you should look into or, or have a think about when it comes to enrolling in any online programs. Are there weekly implementation workshops? Like these are the things that we've found from our experience um, definitely increases uh, people's participation rates. And this is something that we're doing when we launch Founder Plus. Uh, in the future, we're going to have weekly workshops every single week for our community. Um, so those are a few things. Does that answer your question, Rebecca? Yeah, no, abs absolutely. Those three things that you that you said, you know, talking about, you know, how to find the right course, but just, you know, implementing it too. And I love that. It really is. It's learning. And then it's actually a day of like implementation. And I know that uh, Rory from Brand Builders, that's what they're really focused on. They have all of the online courses. You can go through it. But it's then like, right, let's get together in person. Let's get together in Zoom and actually do it. Actually figure out where your niche is or whatever it is that you're kind of going through or what you're building. So, you know, that's fantastic. Tell me a little bit more as we close out right here about Founders Plus. I've heard you mention it a couple of times. Uh, ultimate access, all the things, because you got a lot of courses. T tell us a little bit about it because what's coming up. Yeah, sure thing. So um, we've got 25 courses in our platform and uh, one thing we've, one thing that we think is really important is, is we, as I said, we want to build one of the largest online business schools in the world. We want to build one of the most comprehensive online business education platforms in the world with 
hundreds of thousands of students and members. And so it's a disservice that we don't offer an all access pass um, where you can access every single founder course uh, and so much more, not just the courses, the community, the frameworks. Um, and as I said, we're going to move to weekly live workshops, all sorts of things. So um, we're launching our all access membership called Founder Plus. So it's just called Founder Plus. It's a, so it's an all access membership where for an annual fee, you can enroll in all of our courses. And that's launching in July, July of 2022. And uh, basically we've set, set up our operations that we're launching one new course a month. So if you enroll in Founder Plus, you'll get access to at least 12 courses a year and uh and all of our previous courses and programs in our platform and we plan to get that to eventually one course a week so that's um that's kind of our mission and goal now one course a week that might take us it'll take us a couple of years to get to <laughs> uh so still early days but yeah one course a month um so as an example if you if you signed up to founder plus in july uh, the next course that would go out is a, is a course on TikTok advertising with a guy called Gerardo Perez. Um, he's got like over 300,000 followers on TikTok. He works with all sorts of really well-known personal brands and companies uh, and uh, around how to use TikTok ads to grow your business. Then the next course is on B2B lead gen. Uh, like we've got so many, like it, it's, it's going to be incredible. So we're really excited about Founder Plus. That's awesome. I'll definitely make sure that everybody has the links to, to everything. And thank you so much, Nathan, for your time, uh, for giving so many valuable tips and just having a platform where you have so many courses. And I do just want to highlight the fact that you put in so much money in the front end to make these courses interactive, actual takeaways to do, action steps. And then it's really high quality as well, because I think that really does make a difference when you're going through a course. Yeah, 100%. And uh, look, uh, one thing we'd love to do for your listeners is uh, if you go to founder.com forward slash membership, you can actually sign up for the waitlist to hear about Founder Plus. Uh, and if you're not interested, that's totally fine. If you sign up as well, we'll give you a free magazine subscription. So you'll get access to all of our future editions and previous editions. Um, that's just a just a thank you for your time for your members and these are interviews with some of the greatest entrepreneurs of our generation oh that's amazing thank you so much nathan i'm like i'm signing up for plus i'm like i love courses <laughs> i love learning stuff i've literally googled and youtube how to do everything uh with with my business so it's so great to actually have a course to go through thank you so much nathan guys i'm going to make sure that you have all the links to everything uh go and give nathan some love on his instagram as well his link is below uh you guys did amazing today staying focused and making sure that you're spending time on things that are going to help you get to where you want to be in life. And Nathan, I do have one last question for you. What does grit mean to you? Oh, grit means to me just doing the hard stuff. Like if you want to achieve anything in life, uh, anything that you can be proud of, it takes grit. Uh, you have to show up every single day. And sometimes it's going to be hard, but you just keep going. I love it. Show up. Keep on showing up. Thank you so much, Nathan. Guys, make sure that you go and give Nathan some love. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're following us on the It Take Grit podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, everybody.